Now we're going to describe South Asia's weather and climate patterns. We're going to see differences in time of year, but also uh, differences on one side of the region versus the other. Here we're looking at temperature. And when we think about temperature, there's some variations that we see across our surface and some reasons for that. One of the key reasons I've mentioned is the role of upland areas. And that's very clearly seen here when we look at the Himalayan mountains. I mean, they're very much that abrupt change where we go from yellow and greens and then where the Himalayans mountain, Himalayan mountains are, we see that white, that very light colored in the Tibetan plateau, which really sticks out on the other side. So here we can see definitely the role of altitude in terms of temperature we find. Uh, in terms of the general patterns we see in South Asia, uh, you know, especially on the areas more lowland, uh, not in the Himalayas, not in the upland areas. Uh, it is fairly hot here. Uh, it's hot to warm, uh, so it's not like what we'd see here. Uh, it's definitely more tropical. It's definitely hotter, definitely warmer. Uh, you're going to see a lot more of the A climate here. Uh, you're going to see a lot more of the C climate, a little bit more of what we'd find maybe in the southeast part of the United States. But there is uh, a particular interesting characteristic of the South Asian climate, which I'll get to a little bit later on. Uh, we also have the role of continentality. So, of course, if you're along a coastline, you're going to have moderated temperatures. Uh, but when you go deeper into the continent, especially there, northern India, uh, northern Pakistan, uh, you're going to see more of that continentality effect. So you're going to see more variations in temperatures throughout the year, uh, unlike a place like Sri Lanka or there in the southern tip of India, where temperatures are going to be much more moderated. Further, you're going to see also the role of latitude. Of course, there, the southern tip of India, Sri Lanka, it's warmer because it's closer to the equator. And as you go farther away, it gets colder. Now we see the summertime temperatures and, of course, the Himalayan mountains and the Tibetan plateau. Once again, that a very high upland area. It doesn't even get uh, uh, that warm uh, in the summertime. Uh, other variations we can see here, uh, there, the Thar Desert, uh, that area that's very, very, very dry. We can see actually in the case of July is where we find the hottest temperatures, the reds uh, there in Pakistan. What that is is essentially the absence of clouds. Once again, in a tropical area, area gets very, very high, intense sun, uh, solar energy. It's going to really superheat that surface and thus cause a warmer temperatures. Uh, but the same variations I mentioned beforehand regarding latitude and being along a coastline altitude we see play out in the summertime map. Now let's look at the other side of climate. We look at temperature. Now let's look at precipitation. Uh, so in terms of precipitation, the general pattern we see here is in the eastern part of South Asia. It's wet. And as you go to the west, it gets drier. We already know that. We've already seen some particular examples of that when we look at the Thar Desert. They're in the extreme, you know, a western part of South Asia, there in Pakistan, it's of course quite dry, it's a desert. Uh, we also see orographic precipitation at work. You're gonna see uh, higher precipitation levels along the Himalayan mountains, but also there the Western Ghats. In the case of the wet Western Ghats, uh, because it's also so Southern and tropical, uh, here you actually have a tropical climate. Uh, so it's uh, uh, you know almost a rainforest type of climate we find here. Uh, because it's so wet, because of orographics, uh, but also, I don't know if war graphics is a term, uh, but you know, pornographics isn't. So anyway, uh, so uh, we see orographic precipitation here, the Western Ghats, uh, they're in a very tropical area. And the July map further underscores the eastern part of South Asia, where we see purple, uh, we see more rain on the eastern part. And as we go west, uh, we see it definitely gets drier. And I can even show that in a bar graph. And so here we see average precipitation in depth. Uh, and we go ascending from left to right. And what do you know? This is also pretty much what we'd see from west to east. Afghanistan and Pakistan in the west, Bangladesh being in the east. And what do you know? As we go, we can see increasing amounts of precipitation as we go east. And of course, precipitation also relates to agricultural productivity. In the case of South Asia, that's very important because a lot of the people still are employed or are, you know, are uh, participate in subsistence agriculture, self-sufficient agriculture. So we can see in India and Pakistan in particular, a large amount of, uh, of arable land. Now, in the case of Pakistan, that might be somewhat interesting because we saw, wait a minute, it's got a lot of the desert area. And it's where we see the western part of the region where it's super dry. What they got going on is the Indus River. The Indus River didn't flow through there. 
Trust me, there would be nobody living there. And mirroring the precipitation patterns is the vegetation, or what's to say crop areas that we find uh, in those particular areas. And so to the east, uh, we're going to find more rice. Rice likes a lot of rainfall, a lot of moisture. Uh, things that don't like as much uh, a rainfall are grains, which we're going to find more in the interior, the Deccan Plateau and parts of the Indus. A gagnetic plane. And then when we get to uh, the great Indian desert, Thar Desert there in, in, in Pakistan area, uh, areas that aren't along the Indus River Valley, uh, we're going to find more pastoral, more kind of grazing in terms of the, the, the agricultural practice.